Hello friends, it's the bear. We have a new review. MiG-29 SMT from company Zvezda. Zvezda. Russian fighter. MiG-29 SMT. I uh, have no idea about this kit at all. I don't know if it's one of the new ones or one of their old ones. Uh, let's see if there's any information. Uh, you got the on the side of the box. You got the color call out by Zvezda. They do make paint. You'll really have trouble trying to find them, even in Russia. Really, I only see them two times. And of course, our world famous brand, Tamaya Tamiya. Okay, right. Uh, 280 parts and 172 scale. It's 24 centimeters long. Okay, let's just open up and see what's inside here. Price was, uh, oh, I think it was 1,300 ruble, was it? Let me just check. 1,200 ruble, and they actually gave me some sort of discount as well. I don't know why. Oh, here's the back of the box as well. When I look at that, very nice picture of the fighter built up. I think SMT is this larger hump on the back where they packed in extra fuel avionics or whatever they had to do. And um, excellent here, good news produced under the license of a Russian aircraft corporation, MiG. So, it, okay, when something's produced under the license, it means it has their blessing. It does not mean that the kit is fully supported by them, as in dimensionally or whatever. And uh, really, I don't have that sort of information available. Zvezda have a typical double boxing, which is great, but difficult for a reviewer. Okay, there we go. It means there's a, a very solid cardboard box inside. And here we are, we have decal shoot, which looks fantastic. One, two, three, four, five, six, like bags of sprues. We'll open them up. And then the instructions. So let's just pause here. I'll open up the bags and let's have a look. Now you might have guessed, seven sprues, for, or seven bags of sprues, there's actually more, there's more, more sprue, actual trays, for a small uh, 172 scale um, aircraft is already good news. And I'll just start off with one sprue and I'm already immediately impressed. Uh, just check out, I think these are called aphid, these weapons here are molded with the fins on. They are not clunky, they look absolutely awesome. I think I've got a great buy here. The uh, wheels here are in two halves. Here's part of a compressor blade. This missile as well, really thin. One piece, so we don't need to bother with any nonsense and gluing halves together. They just seem to have got everything uh, really tight. Everything looks good. Looks really good. There's the ejector seat there. You've got two sprues like this with weapons and wheels. So there's no point to show you the same one twice. Two sprues with further weapons on. These ones are bigger. So, of course, they are in two halves. Uh, you can excuse that, can't you? I mean, like, let's just face it. There are molding limitations. But two sprues like so. I don't, I'm not familiar with these weapons types. Excuse my ignorance on uh, Russian aircraft types. Two sprues like so, which I think are uh, rocket pods or something similar. This kit is packed full of weapons and the molding looks absolutely great on them, really. Look at the rocket pod here, look at the detail in these cuts. Looks really fantastic. And that there as well, really sharp. Okay, main parts, obviously, the fuselage. And this is, uh, I can tell you now, it is really tight. Look at the panel line details. Fine, this is um, Hasegawa, uh, Tamiya Tamiya quality. Really fine detail, not like this horrible crap that Airfix are making with these big trenches. That is sweet. Uh, there's no warpage. This is super thin here. These are the tails, one piece, again. Everything is molded super tight. 
uh, more fitment here I think uh, can form a fuel tank I'm not too sure here's the cowling again it's got detail on it here's the cockpit halves here or the front fuselage should I say and again the details are really tight this is definitely you know a very high quality molding and the parts are that um, like Hasegawa uh, people get confused about styrene they think there's different types of styrene well there's different pressures of injection molding and um, if it's under this sort of pressure it's a higher pressure but not like Bandai which is um, under such compression that the actual parts will split when they're subjected to uh, mineral spirits but we know about that anyways look at this here's the lower half with the um, horizontal stabs are molded on so okay you can't change their alignment unless you were to dissect them but look at how thin they are like everything is like really tight in scale there's the upper wing halves again look at the detail it is tight landing gear looks pretty good as well these are um, this is the I think the main the final spur of the aircraft and it's got these are I think the intakes and other bits and pieces something like that. these look like intake ramps I'm guessing the nose is one piece man that looks good look at all the little details lots of little parts looks really good bonus bag little ziplock bag here and clear parts are oh, tight look at that you can see obviously there's no distortion and they are super thin this is more flexible this stuff as well I've noticed that with their, with their um, transparent parts they haven't got that really um, like brittle plastic they've got the softer plastic and there is like a little tiny bit of I can't call it distortion it's just anyways the, the main point here is the top of the canopy there's no seam line or I can't see one anyway so that's amazing little bonus sprue here you've got a seat your pilot figure uh, in two halves and he's also he can pose his arm and also you've got a, like a guy that you can pose beside the aircraft on a stand how freaking neat is that right okay um, I already saw uh, look at the look at the decals they are super tight there's loads of them for all the weaponry I think there's only there's not gonna be many markings but Jesus Christ that looks good so this is kit 7309 and already I, I mean I just took it off the shelf I just thought hey let's, let's buy one today you know so it's only uh, it's only 1300 ruble and uh, to pot lock and obviously this is one of their newer kits and uh, the proof of the pudding of course is going to be what the fit is like but let's uh, go through the instructions Oh, that's unusual. Instructions this time are um, in a booklet. They're usually in a big fold-out thing. Uh, in case you're, this is Upaka Vishik. It's the packer number 24. So they've got the old quality system in Russia where the packer has to stamp it. So if anything's missing from this kit, they'll probably ask you which packer was it. Oh, it's number 24. Number 24, come here. You're a big problem. Anyways, right. There's two versions. And ah, right. Okay. There is a stand. But I didn't see the stand. Maybe it's somewhere. Maybe I just missed it. I don't know. Let me just check. Maybe that comes in a different. Let me just check. I didn't see a stand. Um, let's have a read. Okay, there's a little bit about the aircraft. MiG-29, multi-purpose frontline fighter. Blah blah blah. Okay, I'll put that inside the description of this video. So we've got in-flight and undercarriage down basically i like that in-flight version it's so sweet man um here's the parts layout map and 
Yeah, there isn't a, um, a stand that's provided. And there's a, quite a bit of parts that are not required. Well, actually not that many. A few parts aren't required. Uh, straight away, it's telling you to do lots and lots of cutting the holes and perforations, even uh, if you want to do the, probably the intake, something there, there's like some sort of vent there that can be altered. And it's telling you straight away which, you know, if you're doing version one or version two, the different things that you need to do. And you're assembling already, they're getting you to assemble the weapons beforehand. Uh, the top and bottom fuse, uh, fuselage halves and the wings all together, all go together in step three. So you can put them all together. You don't need to start on the cockpit. I'm not used to this sort of instruction booklet from Zvezda. It's usually a... Um, big fold-out pamphlet but this is considerably better and the instructions are really clear as well there's not a lot to them especially for an aircraft assembling engines they've got something there like a flame holder ring and it looks like they've got some detail on the inner half there as well it's got the call outs as well for the painting and then you assemble the um, intakes are uh, two halves that join at the lower half so that's a critical join there as long as it's good as long as parts fit, I mean, we, we're not going to expect, uh, you know, seamless, but um, as long as it's a good join, it looks really, it will be sweet. There's the cockpit there. Cockpit doesn't look very detailed at all. I didn't, really, I didn't really look at that. I thought it might be a little tub, but it's not. It's just little sidewall stuff with decals to go on the side. Maybe the scale doesn't really matter too much. And then the halves go on there. There's the ejector seat. The ejector seat's made out of a few components. It's got details on it. And there's even a HUD as well. There's even a HUD provided. And the HUD glass. It's telling you to add some nose weight. Five grams of nose weight. And it's telling you here. Eight B, eight C. Um, I think that's probably to do with fitting in the, the pilot or otherwise. Yeah, into the ejection seat. Decals go onto the front console. There's the, um, they've got like a, a television uh, sighting system and that's also got a transparent part that gets put on there. By step 12, you've got basically most of it together. This is the version with the undercarriage down. Intake ramps, I think these are pod covers actually. So you can blank off the air intakes as well. They've got the, uh, you know, the Russian aircraft are designed for rough field operation. So they've got mud guards on their landing gear, and that's been produced as a part as well. I think by 13, yeah, we're dealing with weapons here. And there's, god damn, there's a lot of different options to go on. Two, three, four, four versions with different weaponry. Probably ground attack or, you know, air superiority versions. I think there's a chock. Yeah, it is. You get chocks as well. So you've got some little bits. Only little bits, but they're little nice touches, aren't they? Of details that allow you to pose the aircraft, uh, you know, with the pilot and with the wheel chocks. Awesome. And this is, yeah, this is calls out. This, the support is not included in the model. You get that in a separate kit if you want to get the, um, the stand for the model. And that's like if you want to do that slot into there. And here's all the um, technical stencils. They go on all the weapons, which will make them look good. And finally, we have uh, the painting for the model, which um, there's two versions. A MiG-29 of the 14th Fighter Regiment, Russian Air Force, I didn't tell you where it's based or anything. Um, but they are the same scheme and then a MiG-29 of the Flight Research Center. Oh, I thought the Flight Research Center might have some cool sort of inscriptions on it. But it's basically the same as, as the other one. They're exactly the same schemes. I, don't, I wonder why they <laughs> They have to duplicate them, don't they? But there are, you know, red stars on them. Here's the call-outs. There isn't many paints that are required. It's to get this Russian camo correct. That's the main part of this. What can I say?
it looks freaking awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll see what price this is in Europe, but it's absolute steel here in Russia. So I hope you enjoy the review.